guys, welcome to a haul video. I'm going to be doing them live lately. And if you guys can, please remember to hit that like button at the start because the like button helps get this video pushed up. YouTube has been having a problem lately with small content creators and pushing their videos in subscription boxes. I've noticed I've actually actively went and unsubscribed to bigger YouTube channels because I wasn't seeing my friends' videos in the my sub box. So we got a nice can of monster. Mayor, welcome, my friend. And guys, I'm doing this on mobile. So please, if your comment doesn't get seen by me, it's probably because you guys said something inappropriate, used a bad word, and YouTube uh, isn't going to show it. So I'm doing great, buddy. How are you, Night Dweller? Everyone in the chat, thank you guys. Remember, smash that like button so we can get this video seen by more people. We are doing a live haul video, and then at the end, I will uh, be doing like a little bit of a Q&A. Uh, do I sound good? Do I sound okay to everyone? Good to see you, Talia, Nix, Cam, everyone in the chat. Everyone, thank you guys. So let's get into the haul video this week. What do you guys want to see first? Anime? Toku? Figures? Manga? What do you guys want to see first? Let me see. Um, I'm sure there'll be a little bit of a delay, uh, but we'll see what we'll see what everyone says here. Um, yes, hello, everyone. Hello, 14 people. Guys, please, 14 people, hit the like button. Hit the like button. All right, manga, Night Dweller. Figures, ooh, manga. Okay, so we got two mangas. Uh, hi, what happened to your head? I shaved it. Um, guys, please hit the like button. All right, so manga, let's talk about, I imported some Japanese manga this month, guys. Um, I'm re I, So what I believe in is supporting creators, supporting the industry. You guys know this. I've talked about this a lot on my channel. And I am in love with the moon. Gundam, uh, <laughs> dang, what's going on, Anton? Uh, I'm in love with the Moon Gundam manga, and I've been reading scans of it since November. And I decided, you know what, volumes in Japan are super cheap. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pick up the manga in Japanese. So I picked up volume one. This is volume one. Expect a first impressions of the series really, really soon. I really like it. It's set in a Universal Century timeline, it is canon, and the main uh, Gundam, thank you, Duty Flash. Uh, the main Gundam, the uh, the Moon Gundam, is the first Gundam I ever painted. I ever took time and really um, uh, spent time on it. And I will be doing a review. I posted pictures on my uh, Twitter. Here's volume two. I love the mech designs. The mech designs are done by the same guy who worked on the majority of the Iron Blooded Orphans uh, mechs. He didn't design uh, the Barbados, though. There's volume three. And here is volume four. There are five volumes out in Japan right now. The fifth volume came out just as I was ordering this. So I don't know. Should I show you guys some panel work? I mean, the art is really damn good. Um, I'm going to show one, one little picture right there. But yeah, the art is really damn good. I, I really like this series. Um, it's probably my favorite uh, piece of Gundam lately that I've, that I've devoured. I've devoured a lot. Um, and then I did pick up, I did order... Uh, the original 14 volumes, uh, but they still haven't arrived yet because it's an import. Um, but I went ahead and got the 15th volume, the newest volume of the five star stories. This is a very in-depth, very uh, beloved uh, mecha slash sci-fi series uh, in Japan. There was a movie that came out not too long ago about this uh, manga. The movie's all right. It's very well animated. It's not that in-depth with the story or anything. What's going on, Geeky? Um but yeah, I really love the artwork in this series. I love the mech designs. Uh, they're very thin. Uh, a lot of the characters are very um, uh, androgynous looking. You can't tell if it's a female or a uh, or a male. And I kind of like that. The story is really in depth. But there's a problem with volume 15. The first 14 volumes were all about this one, you know, this one story. And then the creator made a movie that came out in the Japanese theaters and will never. He says. We'll never get a Blu-ray or physical release outside of theaters uh, called Gothic Maid. And that's when he's heard retconning stuff in the manga to retroactively fit that new movie. So if you were dedicated to the series for a very long time and then the stuff changes, that's just that, that kind of sucks. Um, I picked up another light novel. This is a uh, volume two of Evangelion Anima. Again, this continues to just um, go off the rails. This is absolutely crazy. Uh, this is written by, what was the artist here, uh, by Ikudu Yamashita. Uh, the concept is by Kara. The planning and editing is Yasuo uh, Karashira. It's written by the same mechanical designer that worked on the original 
Eva. And this is this takes place on episode after episode 24. Like, what if this happened? And while I enjoy a good ass, you know, anime ass mecha show, uh, that's not what Evangelion is, and that's what this is turning it into. And while I'm a huge fan of Eva, there's parts of this where I'm like, do I really like this? Yes or no? But overall, I'm having a good time. I love the design work in here. I'm going to try to find a picture for you guys real quick of some of the mechs. Because the mechs are insane. Uh, insane looking. So, uh, yeah, here's this uh, here's this four-legged one right there. Uh, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. And, guys, there's 27 of you guys in the chat. Please hit the like button. For real, it brings – YouTube's had a problem with bringing content to uh, sub boxes. So, if you push that like button, it's going to help with the algorithm and get us higher up. So, please hit the sub button. And then what else do we got? Oh, yeah. Uh, volume 13 of Ultraman. This volume, at the end of Volume 12, we got introduced to Leo and Astro. And this volume kind of has more of them in there. It's very, it's a very action-paced uh, uh, volume. So it kind of flies by super, super fast. And which is kind of a disappointment because we are almost caught up with the Japanese releases. Volume 15 just came out in Japan. They finally gave Taro a suit. And the manga so far, Taro has been like on fire. Um, how long do I think the Ultraman manga will run? I think they are setting up a second big arc. And I honestly, so Cam, there is a phone game coming out in Japan where they're doing the, the guys who do this are designing all the suits. So I think we're going to eventually see all those characters in the manga. But as of right now, uh, the because it's a monthly series, it's going really slow. And we're volume 14 is October of this year if it doesn't get pushed back. So thank you so much for the compliment about, about the haircut. My wife cut the hair and trimmed the beard. And I tried to get myself the eyebrow slip, but I got a little too scared. I'm, I am not my barber. And I didn't want to, you know, my eyebrows are like the signature thing on my face. So, but yeah, uh, this continues to be one of the best ongoing mangas. And I don't say that lightly. This is fantastic. I love this. Um, as an Ultraman fan, it is just pure fan service, but not in the bad way. Um, this pays homage to the classics and also is a continuation to the original Ultraman. But if you are a newcomer coming in, you can enjoy this just as much. Um, so guys, what do you guys want to see next? So that's the manga. What do you guys want to see next? Do you guys want to see anime figures? Um, so let me know. How is everyone? I hope everyone's staying safe, guys. And remember, 27 of you, hit the like button, please. Figures. All right. So um, you guys know I'm a huge uh, Super Sentai fan. Um, I am selling manga. I'm getting a shelf of figures and uh, figures. Everyone's saying figures. Awesome. So I'm getting a shelf. Uh, now I'm going to tell the difference between you and Zach. <laughs> yeah, guys. Zach from Uchu Shelf here. Um, Jetman is my favorite Sentai series of all time. And uh, a lot of the a lot of the Jetman uh, figures are a little expensive, but I found this for really cheap. This is a really cool Jetman uh, figure. Happy to own it in my uh, collection. It is a little damaged, as you can tell. Uh, where is the damage? Yeah, right there. A little scraping on the box, but it's complete. It's in box, and it is in solid shape. Something that is complete and not damaged at all. So uh, every Sunday night, for those of you who don't know, uh, Cam's been there, uh, and Nix has been there as well. Um, every Sunday night we do a Tokusatsu watchathon where uh, me and the viewers uh, we all sync up on the on, on an episode of Toku and we all hit play at the same time and it's one of my favorite things to do. Dylan's been on there with me and one of the shows that's always been a hit with everyone because of how ridiculous it is is Akumizer Three. Uh, it's a Shitaro Ishinomori joint. Uh, he created it and it's so every Toku has like a motif and the motif for this one is uh, Three Musketeers. So uh sadly i couldn't really get anything too crazy but i got this really awesome uh figure set uh of the three guys uh thank you darth pin thank you brother um but the three characters more realistic uh like uh they look like todd mcfarlane who did spawn designed them i really like the i really like this box set um but yeah so uh now we're moving into gunpla i'm gonna include that in does, does the designs are super cool um, I'm going to move into Gunpla. I, I picked up three kits this month. Um, I, if you guys have been following me on Instagram or Twitter, uh, yeah, the, the, the poop guy is my favorite of the trio. He is, uh, he drinks water and then goes berserk. So like every once in a while, it'll just, just like pan the camera and the poop dude is just face down in some water and then just goes berserk for some reason. So, um, but yeah, uh, I picked up the, uh, this, the, the, one of the most anticipated HGs in a while, uh, the origin prototype mobile suit uh, rx78-02 i don't have any 
RX-78 Gundams that I've built yet. Um, and I really wanted to pick this up because there's a lot of hype behind this. I love the I love the color on this suit. Let's see if it shows it up on the camera here. Yeah, that's going to look absolutely sick. I can't wait, dude. Uh, Italian Mr. T, thanks, dude. <laughs> uh, guys, please hit the like button if you're new to this uh, stream. It's going to help bring the the uh the video to more people's sub boxes so there's 31 of you please hit the like button uh then i picked up the uh, rg uh the real grade uh uh evangelion unit 01 uh this is the special edition that comes with the stand right here uh real grades are probably my favorite uh line of gun plus i built the uh new type with the extra funnel set posted some pictures it's an absolutely incredible kit uh, the thing I don't like about HGs is nothing is undergated, so you get a lot of nub marks, and they're such a pain in the ass. That's why I wanted to paint my first kit to ever be um, – to uh, the first kit I ever wanted to paint was an HG because they're cheap, and I don't want to waste the time or the effort and the energy into uh, fucking up potentially a um, – it, it does come with the stand. Yes, it does. Uh, um, no, no, no. This is uh, Shinji's mech. Uh, this is actually Shinji's mom. So <laughs> – um, yeah, I'm really excited to build this. The real grades are incredible. And what this can do, I don't know if they have a picture of it. Um, yeah, right here. It can get down into the running position. The articulation on this is incredible. So I'm really hyped up to uh, to uh, to build that. And then the big kit, the big one, which is the one I'm working on next. This is a, uh, oh man, one, this isn't going to fit on the camera, guys. This is absolutely incredible. Uh, is this going to fit? This is the 160th scale. Mazinger Z. My daughter has been uh, wanting me to build this. This thing is huge, dude. I don't know. I can't get this whole thing in the frame. It's absolutely monstrous. This thing is insanely big. Uh, Mazinger Z uh, is normally one of the bigger mechs ever. It's not the biggest mech. I think um, I think the Ideon might be the biggest mech ever uh, in like anime wise. Um, so here's the thing. I'll actually hear all. So, Sam's asking how long do I think it'll take? I don't think it's going to take that long because I'm going to show you guys how big the pieces are. So I was a little intimidated by the size. This thing is not going to come off. Uh, I, I, I was a little intimidated by, whoa, I was a little intimidated by the size, but the pieces are very, very large. So yeah, like we're talking like big pieces. So probably honestly the same amount of time as a normal kit just is going to be gigantic. You know, these are really large pieces. So um, I don't know if I like the color fully because it is a little too plasticky looking. You know what I mean? So I, I might, since I have some markers and some paint from working on the Moon Gundam, which I might be doing a review of. Uh, where, where am I going to put that bad boy? I'm going to try to put it on the mantle above the fireplace. Hopefully Taylor will let me. Uh, guys, hit the like button. Again, I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to get annoying with it. But please hit the like button. It's going to raise the visibility of the video. And now I got something that's really uh, cool, dude. Um, so laser disc is a format that's always interested me. It's a very dead format, but, um, I am in love with old giant robot shows. You guys know this about me and I found, I've been looking for, I got a couple other things I want to show you too, which tie into this, but I'm going to show you guys this first. Cause these are cool. Uh, in 2001, between 2001, and 2004, uh, there was a series of memorial boxes where they kind of showed off, uh, a nice clean new laser disc printing of these shows in a beautiful box with individual artwork for each disc. And one of the shows was Tridar G7. And doing uh, uh, research on this release is that this was only available if you called in a number. So uh, this is probably the rarest laser disc. Like, honestly, this is probably the rarest laser disc ever. Ever. Uh, rarest anime laser disc, at least. Um, even laser disc. Uh, is it laser disc um it's like laser disc forum or something uh where they where everyone lists and categorizes their laser discs they even uh don't have a picture of this they have confirmed that it is real but they don't have any pictures of the release it came in two boxes i found this by chance i uh really 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 like this um so you posted ghost in a shell on ig how is the manga compared i do not like the manga uh quite as much as the anime, the manga is actually like super lighthearted. Uh, the major is like kind of like a sex addict in the manga. It's really like if you, whatever you experience first, I think is what's going to be what you love. And for me, I experienced Ghost in the Shell as an anime uh, first and Standalone Complex is 
the absolute best thing. Stand Alone Complex is like episodic. It's like a cop procedural uh, set in the cyberpunk world. It's really, really great. So um, now we're going to get into the DVDs and Blu-rays, guys. Again, there's 33 of you guys. Please, let's get that like ratio to 20 likes. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is I imported one of my favorite Toku shows, which I think we are going to... Yo, Neon and Nova is in here. I love Neon and Nova. Uh, guys, Neon and Nova are one of the most, some of the most talented people. I think it's like them and Boogie Snacks. Like those two are the most talented people in this community. Um, but, uh, and Zach and Alex, I don't want to insult anyone. Everyone's talented, but their quality of their videos is insane. Um, so I have been wanting to import Toku. I, my goal at the end, like when I'm like a, 60 years old, I'm retired. My goal with my collection, <laughs> I know professor, right? My goal of my collection is to have every Mecha show and every Toku show in some format, whether that be laser discs, which I just showed off the uh, Tridar G7 laser disc box set, or or Blu-ray or DVD, or maybe even VHS at some point, but I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole quite yet. I picked up all of Guyford. So Guyford, not Guyver, not to be confused with Guyver, which I know uh, Talim in here loves Guyver. Um, uh, yes, I am getting to get the Flip Museum going. So this show is actually kind of cool. It was co-produced. Um, if we lived each other, I would bring you with me for every Clugs of Steel. No no one would pull something fast on me. <laughs> um, is, that, is there any way you can actually watch LaserDisc? Yes, yes, I can. Um, there is a way. And it's not, it's actually not that hard. LaserDisc players aren't that hard to, aren't that hard to get. Um, but this was co-produced by Capcom, the video game company. Uh, Sega did uh, change Jerion which I think we watched on stream two weeks ago and everyone was kind of confused. I like the show, but this I like a lot. This is one of my favorite Toku shows. Uh, the plot is a little all over the place, but the action, the suit designs, the monster designs are so good. I don't know if you guys can see some of that. Uh, just just craziness, especially like, like look at these. Just, it's absolutely crazy. Um, this show holds a special place in my heart. 25 episodes, it's a super quick watch. Super, super quick. Um, the next uh, import I got is I got tired of waiting for the best show of the decade. And I'm not saying that lightly to get licensed. This is the best show of the decade, and that is Thunderbolt Fantasy. This is uh, this is the puppet show written by uh, Gin Urobuchi. Uh, you guys know him from the creator of Psychopaths, um, uh, Madoka Magica. He's done a bunch, a bunch of stuff. Uh, they call him Gin the Butcher. And this is probably his magnum opus. This is some of the best stuff that he's ever written. The puppetry is, is just so well done. It's not on the same level as um, Dark Tower, for instance. But for what it is, it's really, really good. Very complex characters. And what I like about these box sets is that they have little animated, little anime versions of the characters in the back. So if you guys have not watched that, uh, the first two seasons and the first two films are on Crunchyroll. It's actually one of the only reasons why I keep Crunchyroll around is that an Ultraman, but they pulled a lot of their Ultraman stuff, so that kind of sucks, but, but, um, but yeah, if you guys haven't seen Thunderbolt Fantasy, highly recommend you guys, uh, pick it up, uh, where, where did the chat go, where did the chat, where are you guys at, I have, is there any way you can actually watch, the yeah, so that was the last question, is everyone, are we still live, I don't know, did my, uh, did my, uh, Wi-Fi cut out, what's going on here, are you guys still there, Yes. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ultraman because of uh, Mill Creek, though? I don't know. I'm still have Awesome. Uh, then we picked up. Uh, so this is cool. This is a old uh, Tom Wino show. He uh, he worked on his creator Gundam and ID on all that stuff. Um, this is Die Turn 3. This is the Italian release. I understand enough Italian that I can watch this and uh, understand what's going on. Uh, nice, solid Blu ray release. Um, nothing crazy, nothing special. No special uh, book or anything. Just happy to have. Die Hard 3 in a language I can somewhat understand. Um, Mill Creek, not Mill Creek, uh, Discotech continues to be the best. I picked this up and uh, enjoyed watching the first half of this. This is The Wonderful Adventures of Niles Holgersson. This is a anime based off of a Swedish, like, beloved Swedish folktale. Really, really cute. Uh, 52 episodes in standard definition on two Blu-ray discs. Um, I haven't finished it, but I do really enjoy this show. Uh, my daughter was watching it and she thought it was adorable too. And uh, I love seeing her reaction. Every time uh, there was like a big goose on screen, she was like, bird, goose, duck. Um, and stuff that just recently came is uh, 
uh, Synthite Filmworks has a huge 90% off sale, like they always do. This is why I never buy. Uh, Dynet, who did Death Hunter 3, are the best other than Discotech. They have their own Justice to Vegas in the form of uh, MP3 John. That's awesome. Um, is Noah Bunga the Fool? Uh, this is the complete series uh, put out by Synthite Filmworks. They had a huge 90% sale. Um, it's Dutch, not Swedish. Okay. Uh, and then we got uh, Rydeen, uh, both collections. Really like Rydeen. Uh, and then we got uh, Gun Parade March. And then something I've been eyeing because I want to, you know, complete mecha set, but didn't want to pay the hundred dollars for this set. Luckily, there was a thirty and a ninety percent off sale. I got Majestic Prince finally. I'm gonna be diving into this soon. Twenty four episodes. Yeah, again, I don't know where Synthai Filmworks uh, gets off thinking that they can charge a hundred dollars standard for this. It's a little fucking crazy in my opinion. A little too much, especially the quality of their stuff is that great at times. Um, more Garo anime. Finally, dude, I'm so pumped. Uh, we got. Garo uh, Vanishing Line, the complete series. Uh, this is, a, I really like the animated version of these shows. Uh, I really wish, again, Sentai would put out more Garo. They didn't finish the storyline, so they left the storyline incomplete. This is all of Garo that we got. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Blu rays. That's all we got of the franchise, and it's one of my most beloved franchises in Toku. It's a lot of fun. It's dark. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a nice edge to it. How many Garo film adaptations have been put out? A lot. Um, God, they just put out a new movie, uh, like Crescent Moon or something the other day or not the other day, like maybe like two weeks ago. And I watched it and I really enjoyed it. Uh, then we got Garo Crimson Moon. Uh, this is the complete series. This is under the essentials banner, which is kind of weird because I don't really know anyone that's watched Garo, but yeah, Garo is, uh, for those of you who are new to Toku, it's like if HBO did a Toku show, you know, it's a little darker, a little edgier. Uh, there is a lot of, uh, death, a lot of nudity, Whoa. Whoa, okay, we're back. We're back, right? Are we back? It looks like my internet just went out. We back. All right, yeah. So it looks like the internet went out for a split second. And now we are back. I had I disconnected from the Wi-Fi. Um, our, we pay an astronomical amount for the Wi-Fi here, and it just sucks ass. So guys, again, if you're new, we got 34 people. Smash that like button. Um we also picked up uh, Metal Skin Panic Maddox 01. Uh, this is an old and amigo uh, release. Really happy to own it. It's a film. It's, I, think, I think it's like 50 minutes, right? How many minutes is this? Uh, I think it's 50. Yeah, 50 minutes on the dot. So go pick this up. It's, well, pick it up for a decent price. It's it's, it's out of print. Uh, and then Discotech was selling some stuff online. Uh, most of it's in the second pile, so I can't reach it. But one of it was uh, Garaga, another anime film. I really don't know too much about this. I just wanted to pick it up uh, on the back. Uh, I just want to pick it up based on what it says in the back. Uh, a must-have for fans of Planet of the Apes. I actually like Planet of the Apes a lot. I like sci-fi stuff, so I decided to pick it up. Um, and then I found one of my whales, guys. Uh, I found what's going on. Yes, I am back. Dylan is in the chat. Guys, hit the like button. There's 33 of you. If we get the 40 likes, I'll do something uh, silly. Um if we get the 40 viewers, I'll do something crazy. Um, we're one of my whales, one of my huge whales. I, this show was like, I remember this, but I don't remember it too. Like, I didn't, I didn't think it was real. I thought like my brain, I had like tripped on acid or something and imagined watching this as a kid. And it's one of the only Shitaro Ishinomori things that I was missing. Um, and we're talking about Android Kakaider, the animation. Uh, this is an absolutely stupid release. Uh, this is one of the, I think this is one of the last complete collections under the Bandai Entertainment thing that they did. Um, it's only five discs, but there's like an extra, like, like there's an extra thing in here. There's no reason for that. Um, but yeah, I really like this anime quite a bit. I love Shitaro Ishinomori. I'm a huge, uh, why you shave your head? Is it because you saw the new Michael Jordan documentary? Uh, no, I, I still haven't watched that. Uh, oh, Ice, Ziga Payne was supposed to be here today. I found a complete box set of it. Uh, shout out to Otaku Joe. Uh, he's on Facebook. If you guys buy stuff from Otaku Joe, um, tell him I sent you. Uh, a guy sold me the Zika Pain for well below what other people were asking me for. But yeah, I found it. I finally found it. Uh, no, another import of a cool ass Toku show is uh, Cyber Cop, guys. This is a crazy. Uh, this came out in neither. I think this came out in, like the early 90s. Uh, show you some of the suits. The suits are so. like <laughs> They all look like you could tell that they were inspired by dread 
look how look how mean like they're just everyone's mean mugging each other just like Ugh. yeah uh i love the show uh the way that they they call their suits is by uh answering a payphone uh so yeah i'm really i'm glad as well dylan i'm glad i got ziga pain as well um but yeah and i'm glad i own cybercop because this is a uh this is a Tokyo show that I love that not a lot of people talk about. And when I was looking for it, I was surprised that they had a complete box set, three volumes. Uh, they have uh, Japan does like these, um, uh, these like these little uh, Toho does this uh, specifically. Um, they do this like cheaper version where they'll like break the releases up. Um, like on, I think I think that one was like six six discs. Uh, this one is only three DVD cases, uh, but it ends up being about the same. They just space them out on release wise. So I just went ahead and opted in for the box. And speaking of box sets, I went ahead and picked up both Astro Boy box sets by uh, Right Stuff, uh, Nomi Entertainment. Uh, yeah, this is awesome. Uh, I love. I I I give Osama Tezuka shit because uh, I don't think he's as important. Like he's important, but I don't think he's as important to modern. Japanese pop culture as some of his contemporaries. I do think people like Go Nagai, Leji Masamoto, and Shitaro Ishinomori are a hundred times more important, in my opinion. That is the complete series. And this is the thing that kind of uh, made me upset is that these are expensive. Uh, these are uh, these are expensive, but um, the thing is, if you get like the cheaper version, only half of the episodes are included. Um, it's really crazy that that they thought about doing it that way. So they like release them. Um, you know, this one comes with two big sets and then, um, not that, the, not that those are anything to get excited about. Um, and then we got, um, another Tomino show, <sighs> a bad Tomino show. I think that's kind of par for the course here. And that's brain powered. Um, I, I I'm going to be doing a review on this soon. It's, it's not that good. It's it's not that good. I'm not a big fan. Uh, and then I got the only other piece of original Robotech that I was uh, that I was missing. Um, that is Genesis Climber Mospita. So th they used this uh, footage in season three of Robotech, I believe. Right, season three, I think. Um, again, I actually like the show a lot. ADV put this out back in the day. Um, I like it. I like it. Um, and then we got Mars Daybreak as well. The rest of the stuff is from disco tax uh, uh uh ebay store uh then oh let's just go ahead and grab the rest here uh then we got gene shaft this is the salt yeah uh yeah with more stuff the last one didn't upload because i used uh uh for some reason it didn't upload i was a little upset with that um 150 english episodes are, are all 193 i i'm gonna have to look i will answer that question after uh then we got machine head or machine robo revenge of chronos i got all three volumes of that and then uh, a whale of mine, another whale is uh, Escraid. Got that. Uh, this is a wonderful show. This is a very beloved show. Uh, Since I Filmworks had this, have I heard of Angel's Egg? Yes. Since I Filmworks had the license for this, uh, then they just let it slip. They just let it slip. I don't know what happened with that, but yeah. Um, and then the last thing, Yuka Kaze. This is a uh, Jeff Fighter anime, kind of like, um, um, what do you call it? uh ace combat so yeah but yeah that is the halt video guys this is going to be where i just kind of shoot the shit with you guys for a little bit um um but yeah so the collection wise collection is coming along really nicely as you guys can tell i um uh, i sold some more stuff today uh trimming down more of the fat and just keeping stuff that i really love you know i got my giant robot shows my you know my toku uh a lot of discotech releases. Discotech's like the only fucking company that puts out giant robot shows. Um, you know, like discotech puts out giant robo, Voltus Five, Gosh, Baldios, Great Mazinger. You know, Get a Robo, uh, Just Being, like Message from Space. It's just they're. I think I I talk about them a lot, and now I'm friends with a lot of the people. Um, you might need a new shelf. So I have two shelves over there actually um, that I haven't really shown on camera too much. Uh, one shelf is actually used for stuff that is being sold that I need to sell that I need to ship out actually, uh, because of the whole Corona thing I haven't been able to, uh, you can send off that stuff with some time in the next two weeks or so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going, I'm planning on going neither the first or second Monday of May. Um, 
the way I've talked about this, the way my post office is handling things, it's one person at a time. But the like, but like the lobby where the PO boxes are gets congested, so it's dangerous either way. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get up really early on a Monday on my day off. Uh, in the next, like I said, the first week or two of uh, of uh, the first Monday or two of May, I'm going to get up super early and I'm going to go to the post office and I'm going to wait outside for when they open right away. I'm going to. Uh, um, going to ship that stuff. I'm going to ship it out in ways. I'm probably going to ship the first couple things out on the first Monday. And then I, I, I need boxes too, especially for your stuff, Cam. Your thing is huge. I need to find a box big enough for that. I might actually ship it in this Mazinger Z box out there. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, so I have two shelves over there. One of it is going to be figures and Gundams. It's turning into the Gundam shelf. I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight kits on there already. Uh, nine, including the Moon Gundam, which is over there. Uh, yeah, and Professor's also waiting for uh, Robot Wars. What's up with the new shaved head flip? But anyone else that I caught a live stream? How how have you been, man? Um, you know, dude, I'm going bald because I'm 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 a wop. I'm a dirty uh I'm a dirty wop, and uh, it's gonna happen anyway, man. It's gonna happen anyway. Uh, any info on uh, Gundam Origin Advent or Red Comet two series coming back to coming to Blu-ray soon? I know the last episodes aired in the U.S. in September, I believe. Uh, no. Uh, well, let me see. Where is the Gundam? Where's the origin stuff at? Origin, 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 origin. Where is origin? Um, it's somewhere in here. Somewhere in here. Oh, here we go. So yeah, um, yeah, I'm 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 gonna expect them to complete the series here soon. I got these two right here. You know, actually, I need to rearrange the shelf. My daughter came in and pushed a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, yeah, the original TV series is just. Uh, the re-edit to the OVAs. Yeah, just get the OVAs. But I'm a completionist. I have the movies and the original TV show. Um, uh, I think next, I'm going to be diving into this. People hate this series. But I remember like feeling indifferent about it. Like I actually like the mech designs quite a bit in this. But I'm going to be diving back into Gundam Age. I just think they fucked up by making this a kid's show. They like The, the character designs are very childish, as you can tell. Um, but there was a lot of adult content in this show. So I didn't really, I think we only got like one or two master grades. So that's how, it, so a lot of people will go, you know, mech's dead, mech is dead. But uh, dude, I feel so bad because I put Iron Blood Orphans on hold so I can watch Food Wars. Much so I go, what are you doing watching those three shows, dude? Uh, is the original video is not complete in those two? I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's complete. I'm 90% sure it's complete. I refreshed the page, but his hair still isn't there. Looks good, but thank you, Boogie. Uh, Nick's Gintama is like five, yeah. Uh, Gautama, strangely enough, is done by Sunrise, who does Gundam. So, uh, but yeah, I liked Gundam Age. You know, people say um, Mecha's dead, but you guys got to remember, Gunpla sales are fucking like just going through the roof. Like year over year, it's getting bigger and bigger. One of the goals, actually, one of the things I'm planning on uh, is, and I really want to do this, is after this whole Corona thing is over, I would love to like rent out a shop somewhere um in downtown and get like a gundam store going you know and have like online like you can buy stuff online but like have a place where you can like kind of like a board game store where you can go and you know play board games with friends like where you can go buy a kit and uh just sit down and build it there you know have a tv playing anime in the background so i think that would be a really cool place a really cool thing to do uh yeah D dylan dude dylan i i love you dylan dylan guys dylan's one of the nicest people uh in this community along with boogie um but yeah, that's that's something I want to do. I'm also still actively writing uh, a book, I'm watching every mech show I possibly can, and getting my thoughts on it. Uh, what was the last thing I finished? I think the last thing I finished was Ideon again, which is right here. I Ideon is um, you know what blows my mind is that sometimes I sit there and I complain and complain. Uh, like there's a fighting game bar in my city. You, I, I, I know you said you like dislike uh, Double Zeta, Victor Gun, but the more in depth reviews I see and read, the more people like those series. Whoa, I can't see your comment. Um, although I, it seems in general they're disliked. I just, for me, what I don't like about those series is that they come after like such an amazing stretch of anime. Um, Double Zeta, I don't hate as much as Victory. I really don't like Victory that much. Uh, Double Zeta, I think, is essential to like the like for me the original gundam in the movies you know you, you can flip-flop those two um that 
Zeta, you know, Char's Double Zeta, uh, Unicorn is such an incredible run of anime, especially Unicorn, which has got the box set right here, the Japanese box set right here. Uh, Unicorn is my favorite Gundam series um, ever. I think it's a damn near masterpiece. What am I reading? Um, a lot of uh, just a lot of import stuff. I'm reading scans of stuff. Uh, and okay, you check the Astro Boy collection. It's only 104 episodes, and then the final Japanese 193 of Leaves uh, episodes 105. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of just, and it's also stupid expensive. I'm rereading the first 10 volumes of Haikyuu. Uh, you guys start, ooh, Kingdom, hell yeah. Red Gantz, Omni 5, and all of Pluto for the first time. Pluto is fantastic, dude. I'm not a Mecha fan, but I would say Code Geass transcends the genre. I like Code Geass a lot. You know what? I actually recently, that's what I recently finished. I watched all four Code Geass films. Uh, I Oh, hey, I asked you what the most expensive thing is. You showed the black box behind you. What is it? Um, oh, oh, um, this here. Let me move some stuff so I can pick it up. Most expensive thing in my collection. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think this is the most expensive thing. Oh, boy. And that is Legend of the Galactic Heroes box set. I actually, uh, I'm actually planning on doing a video called the most expensive thing in my collections. Um, thank you. Thank you, man. Uh, yeah, I'm actually planning on doing a video called the most expensive stuff in my collection. Um, I was planning on doing it before, but then since then the Akira box that has shot up, uh, I got the, I got all the Gantz singles, you know, like that's expensive. Uh, thank you, man. Thank you. Death rattles. Um, yeah. Uh, Le Legend of the Galactic Heroes is like a near perfect show. Uh, when I think of like top 10 anime of all time, it's up there. It's definitely top five. It was a huge, it's a huge time. It's a huge time investment. Uh, it's a huge money investment as well, but it is fantastic. And if you guys don't have, uh, do I collect burrito? No, I don't have any shown it anymore. Uh, the only thing I do miss is twin star exorcist, uh, black clover, my hero, one punch man, stuff like that. I miss, but I don't own any shown in, in my collection anymore. Uh, my collection is exclusively saying I got the cure box set, but my box is damaged. Not that it really matters since I don't plan on selling it, but, uh, I was lucky. My wife actually got me the box set for our first Christmas when we moved in together. Um, my next haul, I might pick up either Volume One of Berserk or a few of the singles. I would get, I, I would get the deluxes. They're for sure going to continue those. I have Volume Four. Where's Volume Four over there? Uh, might to Amazon send it with a debit, with a dent. I think is what you meant to say with a dent. Uh, but yeah, I like uh, I like the Akira box, but that's gone up in price. I'm going to start Twin Star X as soon as May. I have all the volumes of the day, but never read it. It's good. It's really good. I've been uh, reading 86 up here. I've been reading. Uh, I finished Skullman. Did my review on that. Um, probably going to go back and reread uh, Gun and Wing. Um, might do a review on Gun and the Origin. Compare it to the OVAs. You know, there's a bunch of stuff I want to do. A lot of video ideas I want to do, but it's not enough time. I like these more laid back, casual streams with you guys because... I can still talk and have a good time with you guys and uh, still put out content. Uh, I'm doing my first Gunpla review this week. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. I'm excited to show off my work on the Moon Gundam. Uh, and the way I'm going to do the Gunpla review is because I know a lot of people, a lot of Gunpla reviewers, uh, they just talk about the kit, the articulation, uh, stuff like that. I'm going to like go, um, uh, I'm going to go in and talk about you know, the lore of the suit, because the Moon Gundam is actually the predecessor to the Sazabi. It's like the prototype for the Sazabi. So um, I'm, I'm probably going to do another collection video. Um, it's been, I think, like eight months since I've done one. And uh, yeah, do like, do like a really cool collection video or do a Simply G style collection video. You guys know what I'm talking about, where I talk about each thing for like an hour. She's so in depth with her stuff. She's so knowledgeable. Um, I might do that. Um, these right here are actually bootlegs. These are only bootlegs I will display on my shelf. Um, Evangelion and all of Matt Cross. So, um, but yeah, I have so many ideas. I just don't have enough time, you know, and I want to get this haul video out because I've tried doing it before, uh, but I have more stuff coming. You know, I have the Zega Pain box that's going to be here probably tomorrow. Um, when can I buy the flip light novel? Uh, that's something I've actually been silently working on. I am working on something like that. I, I I love the death, but I got to find time to watch her vids. Yeah, I uh, I usually just you know put the headphones in. I have YouTube Red, so I just close my phone, 
put it in my pocket and listen. Flip one of those bootlegs you'll have to get rid of. You know which one? I know. I know which one you're talking about, man. Uh, it's one of these. It's one of these. I <laughs> I know exactly what you did. Uh, larger or smaller than the last one? At the height of my manga collection, I had 2,500 volumes of manga. I don't even know how many volumes I have now. It's probably less than 1,000. And, duty, you're right. You're right on the money. So I got Berserk. These are all complete. Berserk, uh, Berserk, Light Light Novel, Gantz, Blade of the Immortal. Um, Blam, that's just a, I got all Satomo Nihei at the bottom. Love Satomo Nihei. Vinland Saga, Inu Yashiki. Um, stuff that I haven't sold is uh, No Guns Life, Opossums, uh, the classic collection from Seven Seas. And I think that's it. That's all the manga I have. Like, I've sold so much, guys. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little crazy. I've gotten more anime uh, and sold manga. Love your stuff, man. Thank you, dude. Yeah, I, uh, it's, uh, you know, I bought so much manga, so much. And the problem is I read so much too. Um, I, I, I wasn't either, Cam, and I gave it a second. Like, it's, um, Opossums and No Guns Life are two manga that I didn't, I liked the volume one, didn't like volume two, and then volume three and four have saved the series for me. I both, I enjoy both of those shows. I mean, both those mangas are quite a bit now. Um, oh, yeah. Then I have Ultraman, Gundam, and Alita, and Akira. I keep forgetting I have stuff on top here. But, yeah. Um, probably have, like, 500 volumes now. Um, uh, I'm loving the Uchu Shelf cosplay. Yes. Guys, guys, what's going on? Zach from Uchu Shelf. Minimizing down to yourself that you truly enjoy is the most comfort, comf, comfy tier way to collect. You know what, dude? I agree. So, yeah. When I was collecting, I was just collecting because I was surrounding myself with people – who just collected to collect, like, you know, I had, I had a friend at one point who had 5,000 volumes of manga. He hasn't read all that. He's just collecting to collect. There's, it's, it's, then at a certain point, it just becomes a number. Like when you walk into your room and, you know, and I have a bunch of shit that doesn't represent what I truly, truly like, um, then that just, it felt kind of dumb. You know, I had books everywhere. I had six bookshelves, uh, six of these bookshelves full. Um, and I, I walked in one day and I was just like, you know what? I don't like that whole shelf. I don't like that shelf. I don't like stuff on this shelf. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to sell it and start getting stuff that only that I truly, truly love. And the things I love from the get go has always been Mech and Toku. Um, I like the two things I love the most are is like those, like, you know, and I love like this shelf right here is my favorite manga shelf. Berserk is my all time favorite manga, followed by Gantz, followed by Blade of the Immortal. That's my three favorite series of all time. That this shelf is never going to get sold, um, unless like Taylor's like, hey, you want to you know? Let's because I could probably get at least five hundred bucks for Gantz easily, but yeah, this shelf is never getting sold. You know, this DVD shelf behind here in the corner um, could probably get sold. There's some stuff on there that I probably wouldn't like anymore that I've seen and just been like, eh. But yeah, it's just now I'm at the point where it's like I'm just collecting what I want. You know, what I want is a f entire Mecha. You know, even if I don't like the Mecha series, I still want every Mecha show. There's exceptions to that rule about what collect what you truly love. This entire shelf, I have either read or I've seen this stuff. Um, Pandora Hearts, yeah, that's something I, I did actually own at one time. And man, I actually owned Pandora Hearts at one time. Uh, it was a fantastic set, uh, but the book quality was a little poor. Um, do you collect any art books? Um I have uh, I have a Neon Genesis Evangelion art book over there. Uh, not really art book per se, but I got the uh, Yoshitaki Amano uh, book that Dark Horse put out about his life. I really like him and his work quite a bit. Uh, do I not like Shonen anymore? I'm not a big Shonen guy anymore, man. I uh, I got so I read. So, I think I just read too much. I'm sure I'll come back to it eventually down the road. But you know, we're planning on getting a house this year. Uh, also, having all this stuff like moving this shelf plus two thousand volumes of manga would be insane uh do i like juji ito yes favorite final fantasy Oof. um i think five japanese five gets overlooked quite a bit fantastic fantastic combat system uh especially the especially the job system um that's a hard question i've played every every final fantasy every mainline final fantasy plus x you know two and 13 two and three um i've enjoyed almost every final fantasy game there's not what I can look at and be like, I hated that. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, moving all this stuff is going to be a bitch because, you know, we're going to hire people to move, but no one is touching my stuff. 
Um, no one is to, no one's gonna touch my stuff. I like Juji Ito. I'm probably not gonna get his art book because no offense to him, he draws the same face. You know, it's like a uh, Urasawa. Urasawa draws the same face. Um, um, but yeah, but moving this is gonna be a pain in the butt. Do you guys have any tips on moving? Like, if you have, have you guys ever moved to anime and manga before? Because, uh, yeah, never trust movers. Especially some of the stuff is so valuable. You know what I mean? Some of the stuff is out of print. Um, I'm trying to think of like what would be, like what would like like finding all the Gantt singles would be damn near impossible. Again, especially the qual like the like the quality of mine. Like like my Gantt singles are damn near perfect quality. So and Blade of the Immortal. Like where are you gonna find you know? I just started watching JoJo's Adventure. And it's entertaining and over the top. Exaggerated. It's great. I love JoJo's. I have all the anime except for box set two of all, of uh, series four. I think I missed the last watch along stream. We actually this Sunday, this last Sunday, we didn't do one, uh, just because I was so exhausted from work. Uh, we've been so busy, which is good, but just been so busy, just didn't get a chance to sit down and really uh, watch anything. I forgot how Mono worked on Angels Egg. Yeah, he did. Uh, Mono worked on uh, Angels Egg, and uh, he's got there's a new anime either coming out or that's out uh, that is that like he worked on. So, I put all my anime and manga in plastic totes, and they are fine. Tape up the boxes if you use them. How much for Blade singles? Hmm. Manga, if you're serious, Blade singles. For Blade of the Immortal? Like 350 350 Angel's Egg needs to be in the Criterion Collection. Uh, yeah, I think Angel's Egg, Akira was, I think the original Ghost in the Shell too. Uh, regardless if I sell the singles or not, I'm going to upgrade the Blade of the Immortal, uh, to the deluxe editions. Um, yes, I'm going to buy the, so if I, the plan is to keep these, but if someone offered me the right price for the singles and mine are fucking perfect quality, dude, look at that. Like they're in absolute perfect quality, perfect condition. Um, if someone offered me the right price, I would sell these, um, in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. Um, why buy the, per the Soul Eater Perfect Editions? Probably not. Um, I like Soul Eater quite a bit, quite a bit, but I don't think I'm going to, uh, be revisiting that world anytime soon. I don't think I'm going to be, re I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm going to go back to Soul Eater a anytime soon. I do like it though. I like it a lot. I like Fire Force a lot too. Um, I was a real, I was a big, uh, pusher of fire force on manga tube. I was talking about it for months before the anime. So what I know, wrap them up in butcher paper. That's smart. Uh, the bubble wrap and then tape. You can beat up those bundles without getting damaged. Um, yeah, we have butcher paper at the restaurant. So yeah, I think, yeah, that's actually smart. Butcher paper is a little bit of a bitch to handle though. Um, I'm not really good at folding it. So. Okubo's great art, though. Great, though. Um, I'm trying to think of how I would... Like, also, how would I move the figures? That's the thing I'm worried about, is the Gundams. I'm about to move... Sold Alita and Pluto. Good manga, but trying to downsize to only God-tier manga. I really don't like the one that have volume format. Full Metal Editions, yes. Gotta go. Peace out, Flip. Have a good day. Nix, thank you for joining, buddy. You have a good one, everyone. Check out Nix's channel. He's a pretty cool dude. Love that guy. Uh, Nix, take care. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited because when we get in the house, we actually drove by the house that we're looking at tonight, and I really liked it. Like, I really like the outside. It's got two porches. Um, it's it, and it's on quite a bit of land. It's beautiful. It's like out in the country. Um, you know, I was thinking like, man, I could set up like a fire pit. I could build a fire pit. Set up like a like a like a screen outside and just play anime on the screen outside while you're sitting by the fire. That would be awesome, dude. That would be amazing. Um, God, that would be so rad. Man cave, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have a man cave now. Man cave is going to continue. Uh, the house we're looking at is, I think, four or five bedrooms. So can set up illegal MMA fights. Yeah, yeah, that would be rad. Uh, actually, something that we did in high school is uh, all the football players, there would be a fight night once a year where if you had beef with someone, you would save it all year and you'd beat the shit out of each other, fist fight uh, in someone's garage. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, I was really stupid looking back at it. Um, 
man, this quarantine, dude, they call it COVID-15 for a reason. I've gained so much weight. Does your wife have a hobby? Um, she likes crocheting. She just got into crocheting. Honestly, my wife's hobby, this goes sound boring to people, but like, she's so sweet. Her hobby is being a mom. Like she takes that super seriously. And, um, she's incredible at it. Incredible. You know, she's into like makeup YouTubers, typical 23 year old girl stuff. You know, she's into being, you know, YouTubers and stuff like that. Your wife is like, yeah, she's 23. She's young. Um, super young. That waifu to your waifu. Yeah. My wife is, uh, wonderful. Uh, my wife is, uh, she's an old soul. You know, I, I've never met someone like her. She's incredible. What has she been binging? Um, what has she been watching? I don't know. I don't know what she watches, dude. She watches whatever, and I'm just like, you know, I'm just like, okay, cool. You know, like, I'll I'll come out in the living room and I turn on, like, she doesn't argue with me when I want to put on, like, anime or something, but, like, I'll walk out and I'm just like, what the fuck are you watching? Like, what is this? <laughs> you know? Uh, but she says the same thing about me. So it's all. It's all fair. She's always like, "What are you? What are you watching?" I'm like, uh, go, like "I was watching Ghost of Shell Standalone Complex today." She's like, "What is this?" I'm like, "The one of the best shows of all time." What do you mean? What is this? Uh, yeah, she plays Animal Crossing. That's been her new obsession. She's been uh, absolutely obsessed with Animal Crossing. Not as much in the last week. I just think it's been like, you know, I think she gets sick of stuff real quick. Except for me, thank God. Uh, but yeah, she was like, she binged Animal Crossing the first week. She put like 50 hours in or something, and then now. She, I think she took a couple of days off, but her or a friend play and they like talk on the phone and that's stupid. Have I checked out Beastars yet? No, probably never going to check out Beastars, man. It doesn't seem like it's my thing. I'm not a big fan of uh, anthropomorphic animals. I bet she's a closet berserk fan and won't admit it to you. She, um, she knows what Mira's artwork looks like. Um, I was reading um, uh, Gigantomaxia one time and she walked by. And was like, hey, is that the same uh, mangaka as uh, Berserk? And I was like, yes, it is. Why, yes, it is. Uh, give it a shot. Izzy, what's going on, man? You're catching the later half of the stream. I'm at 115 hours in Animal Crossing. I still play it every day. Yeah, Dylan, you guys are insane. I don't I don't want to do – I don't like doing chores in real life. I would not want to do chores in make-believe life with animals. That does not sound like uh, fun to me, but I'm glad people are having fun. It's a very cute game, and I think it came out at the right time. People absolutely – like, that game broke records. That, that game is going to gonna be the best-selling game of the year. Uh, she can point out Mira marry her again. Um, I would like to. We're gonna we're planning on doing something for our five-year anniversary. Uh, Flip tips his fedora. Why, yes, it is the same one. Yes, it is, my lady. The only anime I ever gave up on was – what? Standalone Complex? Are you serious? You gave up on it? Oh my god. Dude, I was just watching it today. I love that show. That that show's like perfection to me. Uh what the hell, dude? You gave up on one of the best animes of all time? Uh wow. Wow. Man, dude, that breaks my heart. Yeah, go back and try it again. Dude, go back and he's right. Go back and try it again. I'm trying to think of like what shows I would give almost a 10 out of 10. Uh yeah, you, you gave up on standalone complex. Uh, your head, yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, I don't have hair anymore. I have a bald ass head, and the lights actually making it look a little, uh, a little whiter than it is. Flip, name your ten out of ten shows. Standalone complex. Um, Gundam Unicorn. Um. Giant Robo. Um, 10 out of 10 shows. Uh, Cowboy Bebop, obviously. Love Cowboy Bebop. Um, um, oh, um, Star Blazers 2199. Yes. No, Stanley Complex Season 2 is not... I have it right here. Actually, I need to import... This is like a terrible... This is like a terrible Blu-ray. Uh, Eva is a 10. Yeah, Eva is a 10 for me. It's one of my favorites of all time. 
Easily. Easily. This is fucking terrible, dude. This is terrible. Uh, this is a terrible fucking Blu-ray. I don't understand how they dropped the ball on this. Um, God. It's not a good show either. Like, It's not like a great show. There's some really great episodes. Uh, like Escape Serbian Convict. Well, my, my bloodline, I'm Sicilian, uh, but my bloodline, like my DNA is all Middle Eastern. So, um, Punjabi voice. Um, yeah, there's some really cool, um, episodes in this, in the second gig, but, uh, Dylan's 10 out of 10 shows. Whoa, 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 10 out of 10 shows. Dylan is double O seed Fafner now and then here and there, high Q and pick on drum to name a few. Um, I read, I read catcher in the Ryan high school just before watching Samuel complex, uh, first time, uh, blew my mind to see all the references. Wow. I didn't know that. Maybe I should, uh. Uh, uh, Mufaleta than I thought. Uh, Anton, have you heard of? Uh, I don't like saying this. Uh, have you heard of uh, the Bottle of Mentees or the Pizza Connection? Um, I like IQ, man. I can see IQ being a ten out of ten. It's the uh, it's the my hero of sports anime, dude. Uh, it's good. It's good. What's my favorite sports manga? Uh, I was really into Ice Shield just because I played football in high school. Um, but probably high Q. Um, slam dunk. Real and a she didn't know Joe. Yeah. A she didn't know Joe for sure. How did I meet my wife? Well, I used to be 340 pounds, but I was like, you know what? I don't want to be fat no more. Um, uh, so I went to the gym. I lost 130 pounds. I got started getting the powerlifting, got super jacked, and uh she worked at the gym. She worked late at night. She was uh, 20. She was 19 when I met her. Uh, she had just, she started working the late shift. A 19 year old girl, the gym was on the best side of the town, working the like midnight to 7 a.m. shift by herself. A lot of degenerates went into the gym that late at night. Um, so I knew her for months. I, I would walk in, say hi to her, um, you know, just be friendly and cordial. And I, I, I never hit on her because I thought she was out of my league. Um, because in my mind, I was still the 340-pound dude. So I thought this girl was way out of my league. Because my wife is hot. I don't want, I, like, not to be rude or crude. But I like when I first saw my wife, I was like, huh. I was like, oh, my God. Um, um, so one night, you know, she, she must have felt comfortable with me. Because one night she came up to me as I was walking in. And she was like, hey, listen, there's this guy that comes in. Um, he bothers me. Garzy's wig? Shut the fuck up, Professor. <laughs> Uh, I walked in, she goes, Hey, uh, this guy comes in he bothers me. Will you just stand up front and talk to me, uh, until he leaves? He's, he's about to come in. He comes in every night at this time. So I stand there the guy comes in, you could tell he's kind of lingering. And, uh, we talked and I ended up staying up there for like three hours and just talking to her. And I was like, wow, I ever, I really like this girl. Uh, never asked her out. Cause again, I thought she was out of my league. And then fast forward to like a month or so later, uh, she just told me, she was like, you have really beautiful eyes. I was like, uh, thanks. Do you want to go out with me? And she was like, uh, sure. We can go on a date. Um, blew me off the first date because, uh, she has really bad anxiety. So she had like an anxiety attack and she was like, oh, Hey, I have to cancel. Um, so she went out with me the, the week later and, uh, we drove around, we went to dinner uh, then we drove around for 10 hours and just talked, you know, played music for each other, talked, drove around the countryside, got gas like three times that night. And uh, I knew then and there, I was like, that's the woman I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. Nine days later, uh, I proposed to her and four months, three and a half months later, so about four months into our relationship, uh, we got married and we've been married for three years next week or on Thursday. Yeah. Three years Thursday. Uh, you know, two months into our marriage, we found out we were having a baby. And yeah, uh, that's just, yeah, you know, it's worked out, you know, and I was with, I, I was in a relationship for 10 years and, uh, I did not even once think about marriage or anything with that woman. And then we broke up and I met my wife and I knew the knew on our first date that she was going to be the one. Um, but yeah, so that's the story of how I met my wife, met her at the gym, um, I'm the cradle robber. Uh, I am five years older. Her day is, her birthday is the day before mine. 
So hers is the 28th of January, mine's the 29th. I'm five years older than her. So not like, I'm not robbing too much of a cradle. It's just going to be weird when I'm going to be 30. Like I'm going to be 30 in, in, in like a year and a half. That's wild to me. I don't want to be 30. You, you know what I mean? Um, I really don't want to be 30. God, that's wild. I'm going to call it version 3.0. I'm not going to call it 30. I call it version 3.0. Oh, hell yeah, dude. January birthdays. I, I share the same birthday as Oprah. Hell yeah, dude. Oprah rocks. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know. Um, but yeah, she uh, she didn't, she thought anime was hentai. That's what she thought. So like when, she, like when we first got together, I kind of hid the nerdiness from her. Uh, but by like the third or fourth day, I was like, hey, the, <laughs> I'm a weeb. And she was like, oh my God. Um, my wife is six years older than me, man. Age, no big deal. Yeah, age isn't a big deal at all. Age isn't a big deal at all. But uh, I do tell her, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm going to be old. You're going to have to wipe my ass. And she's like, oh, my wife is so, uh, Flip uses this collection of masses, true Oprah obsession. Um, I love Oprah, man. Uh, just kidding. Uh, is that your character backstory in the light novel? Uh, no, the light novel is about this plague, surprisingly enough, that wipes out the human race. Uh, there's a couple people alive in Max. Uh, the boss was asking if, plat end is any good uh no platinum is not good dude not good at all i would not recommend that manga um i don't i don't know you get a gun and you get a gun yeah i'm five years older than my girlfriend it's not weird at all man you know it's just it's it's just it's weird in the sense that she like she grew up in such a small town like small town usa like her graduating class was like 20 something people so, like, she didn't know, like, what Power Rangers were. She's never seen, like, the Matrix movies. She doesn't know the twist uh, in Fight Club. Like, she's never, like, like, like she's such a blank slate um, that, like, I show her stuff and her mind's blown. Like, the other night we watched Mad Max Fury Road in 4K, and she was just blown away. Never heard of Mad Max before in her life. Uh, she was just like, whoa. So, uh, it's just, it's just, it's, it's weird in that sense. That, like to me, stuff that's just like pop culture lexicon stuff, you know, like The Matrix, like Cowboy Bebop, like Dragon Ball. She hasn't heard of any of that. So showing her that stuff is just, it's been wild. Like it's just, it's so cool. Um, I grew up in a small town too. I get that. Um, Mad Max is awesome. First movie is the best. I don't know, dude. Fury Road? Fury Road is fucking incredible, dude. I don't know if you guys have seen Fury Road, especially in 4K. Fucking incredible. Like, one of the best movies, one of the best action movies ever. Uh, I do not like Platinum Men. It's Berserk in your top three. My top three right here, man. Berserk, Gantz, Blade of the Immortal. Top three. Um, Carol Kana is so good. First 18 episodes are 10 out of 10. Uh, yeah, Fury Road is dope. Fury Road is great. Did they ever release the black and white? They did, didn't they? I'm pretty sure mine has that. Thought Road Warrior is best. Flip, have you seen Money Heist on Netflix? No. Kids on Slope was awesome. Um, I do like Kids on Slope a lot. Watanabe, I don't think, has had a miss. I think Terror Resonance was almost a miss, but I, I still liked it at the end. Um, why don't you do a top 10 of your least favorite manga video? Dude, it would just be like Monster Girl shit. Uh, Jin and Mike, uh, RIP to Jin and Mike. Uh, those two uh, is just, those two love Monster Girls, and I had to try it a couple times. I'm like, ugh. Hideaki Anno left after 18 episodes. That's why it got worse. What show are we talking about? What show are we talking about? Is Pluto good? I love Pluto, man. I love Pluto. Yeah, Thunderdome is rad, dude. Thunderdome is pretty rad. Tina Turner was fantastic in that movie. Um, it's so weird touching my head. My kid cried when she saw my head. She was like, no. Oh, you guys talking about Caracano? Okay. Um, yeah, my least favorite manga would just be Monster Girl shit. Not a big fan. Not a fan at all. I think that stuff uh, is absolutely stupid. Uh, I don't know the appeal, but then again, I, I like mecha shows. You know what I mean? So, like, do I really have any room to talk? Speaking of 4K, you think anime tops out as far as Blu-ray? Will we have C4K releases in the future? Um, Discotech uh, put up Cobra, which is where? Cobra's on the shelf. It's 100% on the shelf. I don't want to spend too much time looking for it. But yeah, they did a 4K release of Cobra the Animation. Um, it's incredible, dude. 
Uh, I've never done psychedelics, never done drugs really in my life. So um, it's incredible. It looks good. It looks good. Uh, the scene at Thunderdome where the kid sinks a quick stand still haunts me. Dude, I love the 80s when they just hurt kids. <laughs> uh, knowing Volume 3 helps you better appreciate Pluto. Um, Pluto has one of my most favorite. Uh, yeah, for, uh, yeah uh, Castle Cagliostro is coming in 4K. Uh, so that's, yeah, Gans is in my top three. Uh, top five um, right now is probably, um, uh, am I getting back into powerlifting? I'm still pretty, uh, I do have the Die Buster DVDs. They're down here. They're on the bottom of the shelf. Uh, powerlifting. Uh, no, dude, because it really fucks up your joints and your back. Uh, I have a really bad back because of it. Um, I took steroids at one point too. Um, it's just, it's not good. Um, I'm still really strong though. Um, I like before all this, you know, about a month ago, um, I was still benching 350. So I'm still benching 350. Um, I did a, there's a video of me on Twitter somewhere. I'm doing a, um, a 200 pound, uh, bicep curl. Um, at the restaurant, you know, we're mixing dough by hand. You know, we, we take two 50 pound bags of flour and that eventually turns into like when you're moving it and flipping it, that turns into probably two, 300 pounds of dough. We do that every day, sometimes twice a day, uh, moving blocks of cheese, you know, cases of cheese, that's 60 pounds. You do 12 cases a day. Um, so I'm still like active at the restaurant. It's just, I hold all my weight in my midsection. So if I gain any weight, it's just gut chest up. I'm pretty good. My arms are still, you know, defined. My traps still look good. My back is still defined. Um, it just, uh, I hold all my weight in my midsection, which sucks. I got that. I got that dirty Italian jeans, dude. Um, I yeah, actually, uh, the 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 boss we showed off today in the haul video um, showed off. I got all of Moon Gundam um, in Japanese, so uh, picked that up today or picked that up this month. Um, it's probably my, one of my favorite things. I don't speak Japanese. No, no. Uh, but I read the scans of the series and I really like the series and I wanted to support it because it's a really damn good series, especially, uh, modern Gundam. We love a gut, no shame. Uh, yeah, you know, I just, when you, uh, when you get into powerlifting, you notice a lot of the guys do have guts because you have to like, you have to have, like, you can't be like skinny. You have to have a lot of fucking strength. Uh, a lot of core strength too. Like I may have a gut, but like a lot of the strength comes from your core. If you don't have core strength, you're not going to have strength anywhere. You know what I mean? Um, so you have to like, ugh. dad bods and season flip. I know, I know, but I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like prison dad bod, you know, like dad bod, like dudes who get out of prison where they're like chest, arms, back are all jacked and they got a little gut. That's what, that's what I look like. I see like a skull tattoo now and I'll look like a prison man. Um, I tried doing my own eyebrow slit. I, I got I got a little scared with it. Um, but yeah, I'm still like I'm still like I'm not 340 pounds, but I'm still self conscious about my body because it's just you know I was so I was fat so long, like you know what I mean like I was fat for a decade. My 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 waist size graduating high school was a size 50. My pant size was 50. I was huge, guys. I was so fucking big. And, uh, that's why I don't like fat shaming is even if like, I don't agree, uh, uh, Gronk to the bucks. I saw that. That's fucking wild. Gronk is going to butts bucks. Um, the thing I, do, the thing I don't agree, I don't like fat shaming because one, when people would fat shame me, it just made me want to eat more. Um, you know, and I, someone, you know, who's dealt with, you know, depression stuff. Uh, the thing that I've had, the way I lost weight was I had to, one, it was a wake up call. I couldn't breathe when I woke up one day and I was like 20 something. Um, but I had to learn to love myself and, uh, well, see ya. Do you take care man? Take care, buddy. And, uh, I had to learn to love myself. Then, uh, then I had to work on myself. That obstructive sleep apnea, dude, it was bad, man. It was really bad. Fat shame is probably not good, but fat acceptance is probably not good either. Um, yeah, I mean, here's my stance on as someone who used to be severely, uh, obese, um, I don't think fat shaming works at all, like at all. Because when people would fat shame me, I would just want to eat. It just made me depressed. Um, but when people just – here's what I learned. This is actually something that's really cool and something that people don't 
understand. Like when I went to the gym, all the buff meatheads were not fucking dicks. They were the nicest human beings I've ever met. They wanted to help you. And if you were struggling and you just asked like one of the Jack meatheads, like, hey, can you help me? They were they were so welcoming and so loving and so like being like and they would cheer you on. And you know, every day I would I would run miles. I'm talking like five miles a night. And they would, you know, the same dude would come up and he'd be like, Hey man, you're killing it, bro. You're killing it, bro. And then I didn't see him for six months and he came back and he saw me and I was like yoked. He was like, Holy fuck, dude. Like, congratulations. You know, gave me a big hug. And he was like really happy for me. Um, fat shaming doesn't work. I don't think fat acceptance is necessarily good either, but at the same time, it's people's fucking bodies. Let them do whatever the fuck they want. Um, they're not hurting anybody. Like fat people don't disgust me. They, they don't gross me out. Um, but and it and people who are like so adamant about anti fat people, just go fuck yourselves, guys. Seriously, because you you're doing more harm than you're doing good. Um, no, nothing makes you want to eat more than someone telling you to lose weight because you're overweight. I loved that every day of my life when I was young. Yeah, same thing, Dylan. Dylan, same thing. I was overweight for I was three. I was over three hundred pounds for ten years. It's not good. Um, I like, I like a term better is body acceptance. See, you have to, in order to improve yourself, you have to accept yourself. And that's not, and I truly believe that I had to accept who I was. Like I found out because of working at the restaurant and, you know, going to the gym, I, I, when I started going to the gym, I would have really bad anxiety. I pull into the parking lot, have really bad anxiety and I would just leave it to 20 minutes. Uh, and I, uh, and I'll answer that question in a, in a second, buddy. Um, but when I started actually going in, um, I noticed, um, that I was strong just from naturally working with dough and working in the restaurant for all those years. I was just not in mass moves, mass. So I was just naturally strong. So I started lifting weights and even if I wasn't doing cardio, cause I couldn't, cause I was so fat, I was still doing something. I was burning car. I was burning calories. I was doing something. Uh, my max bench was uh, 450 pounds for one rep. Uh, the max uh, deadlift was like 500 something pounds. I've, I've never been good at deadlifting. Um, and I wasn't too big in squatting, uh, but squatting was about, about, about the same, about like 500 and something. Um, I have a really bad back. I've had a bad back for years. Uh, Dark Ted, you take care, brother. You take care, man. You stay groovy as well, dude. Um, I've had a bad back for years because of football. And, you know, working out with not proper form, but body dysmorphia is also a very real thing. Matt, Matt, Matt Mercer deals with it every day. You know, dude, and that's the thing. That's what it boils down to. You don't know what someone, what's going on in someone's mind. So don't hate on them because their appearance, you know what I mean? It's just, I don't think, I don't know. It's a, it's a very complicated, uh, uh, issue. And I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's a very cut and dry thing. I don't think it's very cut and dry. Uh, but my motto is my motto is I leave people alone. People do what they want to do. It doesn't affect me. Um, I did have one guy who was a little overweight. Um, he was probably like four hundred pounds. Honestly, he's a big guy. Uh, come up to me at the gym, and uh, he asked me to uh, to watch him. And I ended up becoming close with this guy and I made a workout plan for him and he lost like 50 pounds and he was so happy. Um, so, you know, encouragement is good. If you see like the thing that pisses me off and I know people do this is when someone's at, when you see an overweight dude uh, at the gym and then you start making fun of him, that dude is there to fucking better himself. Like, don't make fun of that dude. You should encourage that guy. You should try to lift him up, lift his spirits up. Because being there, being at the gym in public as an overweight dude is one of the most anxiety-inducing things you could ever fucking do. It, I had panic attacks constantly. I thought everyone was judging me. Everyone was making fun of me. But at the end of the day, you're one person out of eight billion. Uh, totally, totally agree you should be kind. Let people do what they want. That being said, I cringe pretty hard when I see morbidly really obese children. Uh, see, that's bad parenting, though that's bad parenting. Um, you know, we're trying to eat as healthy as we possibly can. So our daughter, cause I do have weight problems. Uh, high school football takes a toil on your body for my ACL lost all confidence in the weight room. After that was told, was told I was too skinny, not the exact. And so not exactly the same, but I wasn't able to put on weight, dude. Also people who can't gain weight. That's a real fucking thing too. I have friends who are self-conscious because of how skinny they are. That's a real thing too. 
that's a real thing. And that's a thing that, you know, like I know dudes who are big, who are like, Oh, I wish I could be skinny. It's like, you don't, you don't know what's going on in their minds. I don't judge anyone. I don't judge anyone by their body size, uh, by their race, by their religion, by their sexual orientation, you know, or anything. Um, I accept everybody for who they are. And I try, and I, and I genuinely want to be everyone's friend. I would go, I would go to the gym scared to go inside and go home without going inside. I did that, that duty. I did that every night for so long, for so long, dude. I just, I was like, I would go. Um, yeah, I would say being skinny is better alternative to being fat from a health perspective. I know dudes who are so skinny that they can't, um, gain weight and that's bad. But also guys, even when I was like super buff, when I was at the thinnest, I weighed the less, I, I weighed the, I weighed the, the least amount I've ever weighed in my life. I had so much muscle that the doctor told me it's no different than having fat. Uh, dudes who are super buff, all that muscle is still mass on your body. It's still not good for you. So if, even if you see a dude who's fucking jacked to the gills, that dude's unhealthy. Yeah, he may be able to run and do, you know, lift weights. He's, he's still not healthy though. Um, but yeah, well, you know, uh, um, but yeah, I don't know. That's a, that's a deep, that's a deep, that's probably one of the, that's probably the second time we've gotten deep on a topic on this channel. So, and this video is probably going to stay up. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I believe in not, uh, do you want, do you have, do you have any manwa? Um, I had shaman warrior and priest. Both of those have been sold. So no shaman warrior or priest anymore. Which sucks, but nine times out of ten, most of the guys I knew in college and even at work now, those that work out and go to the gym, literally have no other hobbies. They just go work out and work out all day. That's what I did, dude. I was working out five to six hours a day. I had no time for anything else. I literally got off work, go to the gym, work out for like literally five to six hours a night. It, I, I I did that religiously. That was my life. I had no other. I had no time for anything else. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, he's right. I, I know, I know the dudes who are absolutely like in top tier. It's, 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 it, it's a full-time job. Uh, that's why like when I started to not, like when I got married and we had a kid, I didn't have time to work out as much. I went through a huge depression because I was losing muscle mass. And I was gaining a little bit of weight back and it's just like, yeah, you know, I'm going to gain a little weight. I'm probably not going to be 450 pounds bench again ever in my life because it takes time it's a job to completely fuel that fuel that muscle you have to feed it you have to completely um constantly keep that stuff up and sadly i'm never going to be there again but i have a wife and i have a daughter now and that's so much awesome you know that's so much better i would much rather go on a walk with my family than i would move 450 pounds again i um uh, I did landscaping over the summer with a friend. Um, uh, they were super, um, um, they were super um, impressed that I was able to just move these hundred pound stones. Like it was nothing. They were like, holy shit, dude. Like, like you're like, you're seriously. So I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty fucking strong, dude. You know, I'm a short, I'm stout. Like my fucking shoulders are wide. I'm short. I'm like five, six, five, seven. My fucking legs are huge. Cause I, you know, I was a lineman, uh, doing leg workouts every day. My fucking thighs. I, I got thick thighs. I, 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 I could save so many lives. Um, that's like one of the only things I'm proud of is like how strong I am. So my fat friend lost 30 pounds in a summer in high school from, yeah, it's insane, dude. Um, landscaping's fun. Landscaping was a blast. Uh, my grandparents had their house worked on and the dude they hired as a family friend. He, you know, he asked me, I was like, Hey, do you want to help out? And I was like, fuck yeah, dude. And then I ended up just being uh, the dude who moved all the stone, <laughs> like they were just like, you lift the heavy shit. Cause they're all in their forties and they're all broken down. Um, dude, landscaping is a fucking, it was, it was hard ass work, dude. Um, like I work hard normally like 16, 18 hour days and I work seven days a week for fucking three or four months, dude. Um, I was working seven days a week for four or five months, but I, uh, I, uh, or three, or like, how, how long was it? The problem was it might've been five months because there was a problem with the stone. A lot of them came damaged. So we had to like move them out. Um, but, uh, yeah, I made like thousands of dollars 
off of that dude. It was like the money was insane too. Um, that was a lot of fun. Have you ever thought about what you would want to do if you did not have a family business? Oh yeah, dude. Um, uh, I want to start like a gun plus store, maybe start like my own anime publishing company. Honestly, I'm not like, uh, I have to be physical. Like I love physical labor. Um, I would probably just do landscaping or something. I did that. And I really liked it. And they hire me for jobs every once in a while. Um, the two guys that I did it with, they'll text me or call me. Hey, I actually, when we, when we had to shut down the restaurant and I couldn't, you know, we didn't have an income. I was on the phone with them. I was like, look, if you guys, I don't care how far I have to travel, I will come to you and I will lay stone. I will do whatever you guys need me to do. And I was getting ready. I was geared up to go uh, have a job with them right away. Um, but, we opened back up the restaurant. We were able to do pickup and carry out or delivery and pickup only. So, but yeah, uh, being a dad, being a, you know, being a father to a child, you have to provide. And I was instantly like, hell yeah. I, you know, I, we have money saved up. We have quite a bit of money saved up, but no income, you know, you can only live off of sa savings for so long. So I was like, we have no income. I need to go get a job and do something. So I, um, I was ready to go do landscaping. Is 20th Century Boy is good? 20th Century Boy is fantastic, dude. Um, Urasawa was, I like Pluto the best out of his stuff just because I like Astro Boy quite a bit. And the story, like the arc that that's part of, is pretty rad. Um, and I love seeing those robot designs. And I like Pluto a lot. Mare, I think Mare is more of a monster fan. I know there's like this, like I've been saying I love Pluto for a while, but there's been like this push for love for Pluto. Crazy, my restaurant closed in September before all this started. I was a server slash food runner for a few years. Dude, food food industry is rough, man. Especially being, now we have no employees anymore. So, like, my workload fucking tripled. I get there earlier, uh, and I get and I'm the last to leave. So, Monsters is one of the best anime, period. Yeah, I agree. There's a little, couple, I, I would trim a couple episodes, but yeah. Um... It's pretty close to perfect. <sighs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else I think would be perfect. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't want you to get in trouble with your work, but man, I know you have some crazy kitchen stories like the rest of us. Um, honest to God, though, we've never done anything crazy to people's food um, or anything bad like that. Just... Uh, Customers pit like just like rude customers. Uh, when did you first start getting an anime and manga? Uh, when I was super young, you know, uh, Gundam Wing was like what on Cartoon Network in '95, right? It was like super long ago, so '97, I think. So I saw Gundam Wing, Cowboy Bebop early on, early, 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 early in life. Uh, and then in junior high, got into manga through Trigun and stuff, and Helsing and Shaman, Shaman King. Uh, Gans is super out of print. Um, but yeah, I don't know, like that more with like horrible customers and terrible employees. Uh, we had a dude who would like go to the bathroom and just disappear for like an hour. And then he would come out and be like, Hey, I'm taking my break. And we'd be like, what the fuck did you just do for an hour? Um, we've had employees threaten to fight us. Um, we've had customers, you know, just, you know, be shitty, uh, especially late at night. You know, it's, um. Oh, uh, the scariest thing. Um, oh, yeah, we had a, oh, a, a, I I got sexually assaulted by a waitress. We, uh, we had a waitress who worked there when I was super young. And she, uh, she's like a normal girl, got hooked on heroin and uh, disappeared for a couple of years. And when she came back, we gave her a second chance at the restaurant and um, she couldn't drive. So I had to drive her home and I was driving her home and uh, she we pull in her driveway and her husband's car is there. So I don't like, she's nuts. She reached over for a kiss and I was like, no. And then she full on grabbed, uh, grabbed the jewels and asked me to come inside and have sex with her. And I was like, Tara, no, no, it's not happening. And, uh, when she realized she was like, she, and I was younger than I was, I was an adult, but I wasn't like on my own. I was still living at home. And my parents are the bosses. So uh, she started crying and she goes, don't tell your mom and dad, please. I don't want them to hate me. Um, so the first thing I did when I got home, I was like, yo, mom, dad, Tara just grabbed my dick. And 
<laughs> they were like, that's weird. And I was like, yeah, it was pretty weird. It was really weird. I just got sexually assaulted. Uh, yeah, it's a hard no, dude. I was like, mm, no, 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 no. Uh, no, ma'am. No, thank you. Um, what old lady story? Which one are you referring to? There's a couple old lady stories. A uh, couple old lady. Jesus, second chance has never worked at my restaurant, unfortunately. Yeah, ours either, man. Uh, second chance was I got sexually assaulted. So that was pretty nice. Um, we had a dude. Uh, what f- manga do you find has the best art? Um, probably berserk easily we hired and fired people like three times yeah that happens dude that happens in the restaurant industry um the restaurant industry is really it's super fast-paced dude and it's not made like like not everyone is cut out for the restaurant industry especially long term the dudes that are super into the restaurant industry long term are fucking nuts dude that's why i'm on monster all the time you know everyone else is like i'm fucking weed and high and shit i'm just drinking monster um what old lady story? How many workers do you have at your pizza place? We have zero now. It's me, my mom, my dad. That's it. That's it. Uh, most people aren't cut out. You're you're totally right. It's dude. It's stressful, man. Especially like when you get in the rush, people start hating each other, cussing at each other. Um, it's rough. It's a rough job, but I love it. Uh, old neighbor of yours. Of her neck getting wet? Neck getting wet. Neck getting wet. I'm having a brain fart. For I've worked in fast food for a summer. Didn't go well. Neck getting wet. I'm trying to remember the old lady neck getting wet. Weirdest thing that happened when I worked at college kitchen and a dishwasher got high, high in the bathroom and walked out naked. That's a pretty funny story. Was that you? Neck getting wet. I'm trying to think of old, what old lady story. Do you like One Piece? Yes, I do, but I'm not reading it anymore. Yo, Granny. Is there a manga that is, is there a manga that is really big and interesting so that I don't finish it quickly? Uh, Berserk. Uh, hello, Hall of Weep, hello. She was talking to your mom and you were laughing. Oh man, are you talking? Okay, I think I think I think I. Oh my god, I think I know exactly what you're talking about. There, we we had this old lady. Uh, I don't want to say her name because uh, okay, so we we had this old lady who is like she's old and she's like an old biker slut. Like she's like probably in her late seventies. She never wears a bra when she comes in. She got these big saggy titties. She's got like a big chest tattoo. She's she wears shirts that are like like crop tops. She's got a nasty tramp stamp in the background. And uh God, every time she orders, she's such a pain in the fucking ass. And uh one night uh I was kind of rude to her on the phone because she was a she was being a bitch. So I was like rude to her. And uh she then called to my mom and was just bitch and bitch and bitch and because we fucked up her order. And uh, when the when the driver went to her house to deliver her food, she the dog took a shit on the floor and she picked up the shit with her bare hand. And uh, when the when she went to hand him money, the driver was like, I'm not taking any money. Fuck this and left. Um, That lady is crazy. She hasn't been around in a while. I think she might have died, Uh, which would suck because I don't want death on anybody. But that lady is fucking crazy. Uh, we had, we actually, we had guys. So in our, uh, in our restaurant, we have a, a system where we will, um, a lot of people say berserk is garbage. A lot of people are fucking stupid, dude. You don't like berserk. What the fuck is wrong with you? What are you doing with your life? You don't like berserk. Jesus Christ. What the fuck do you like? Barbie dolls? You fucking lose. I'm just kidding. Um, like what you like. I, I, I get shit for what I like. It's just one of those things. Um, but yeah, it's been fucking 90 minutes. Holy shit. I'm triggered. Uh, all right. Speaking of trigger, Premiere comes out in a couple weeks. Super pumped about that. What's up here? Uh, uh, 
don't know. You're bald now? What the fuck? Berserk 2016, that is. Yeah, hey, you're you're right, Professor. Yeah, I'm bald now, dude. I'm Zach from Uchi Shelf. Uh, Berserk is top rated manga on Mal. Hussein is garbage. Flip, your business is doing, is your business doing well? Yes, we are. Oh, the wife texted me. She said, be with me. So I'm going to get going here in about five minutes, guys. I'm going to go hang out with the wife. Is my business doing well? Yes, we are blessed and lucky that we have been doing very, uh, I know who it is, Tristan. You changed your name and it threw me off, dude. Like at first I was like, isn't that Otaku Unboxings? And I'm like, wait a minute. But yeah, what's going on, man? How, how are you, buddy? Um, yeah, but business is doing well, dude. Uh, business is doing super, super well. Uh, we're very, very blessed to be doing as well as we are, uh, considering the circumstances. Uh, I can't believe your state's opening back up, dude. Uh, ours is thinking about shutting it down till June again. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Um, this whole situation is scary. I think even after we reopen, we're not going to have a dining room just to be safe for like probably the rest of the year. Um, which, you know, it's, it might suck in the winter years. Uh, flowers of evil or happiness. <sighs> happiness. My nose ring is crooked. Just notice that. Uh, happiness for sure. Oh, everyone's saying flowers of evil. Chipotle is disgusting. Uh, I think Chipotle is overrated. I like uh, Chick-fil-A for fast food the most. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any other questions to ask, you guys can ask anything. I will. Uh, I'm gonna get going here in a little bit. Um, Flowers of you, I liked, but I didn't like it as much as Happiness. His artwork is great. I do agree with Mayor. His artwork is great and intense. Uh, his new series, Blood on the Tracks, is good. Might be his best. It might actually be his best. I really like Blood on the Tracks. I really like. I was reading the scans of that. I was hoping it'd get uh, picked up, and it did. So, Do you collect the anime art books? I have the Evangelion um, art book over there. That's about it. That's the only art book I have. I might import... Actually, I did import. It's not here yet. Uh, the Evangelion anima art book. So that's pretty rad. Um, I want like I would love like a mech art book. Uh, God, uh, Professor, who might be able to answer this question? The guy who... I always forget. Sid Mead, sorry. Um, Sid Mead, uh, did a art book for Gundam Turn A because he designed the mechs in there. And I really want that. Uh, I'm on chapter 71 on Blood on the Tracks. It's getting really freaking good. It's so good, dude. There's 71 chapters now, chapters now. I was reading it when it was like, I was reading it as it was coming out and then it eventually dropped because I couldn't wait. I'm so impatient. I have to have something complete right then and there. Um, that's why I'm waiting for, uh, to watch the rest of City Hunter season two box that comes out soon. I'm going to pick up the uh, binge watch season one. You own Berserk Art Book 2? No. I don't have a Berserk Art Book. I have uh, I, the only extracurricular Berserk things I have are the guidebook and then uh, the light novel. That's it. The light novel is fucking terrible. I'll get blood in the tracks after I finish Happiness. Hap, hap, happiness is really good. I used to own it. I, I would love a Gantz art book. My fa Actually, you know what? My favorite art book, guys, the best art book you can buy is Blam. This is the this is the best art book ever. Um, the new Berserk chapter is coming out what in a couple of days, the twenty sixth. Um, if you guys haven't read Blam, I recommend picking this up. I love this. This is my top. This is one of my top five mangas of all time. I fucking love Blam. It's incredible. Uh, the artwork is superb. Uh, God, it's just some of the scenes are fucking breathtaking, dude. So good. Uh, blame is good. No dialogue, just art. Yeah. Like, look at this shit, dude. Look at that. That's fucking rad. Um, Vertical, dude. Vertical doesn't put out much stuff I pick up anymore. Uh, just because they seem to have, like, focused, uh, shift focus on, like, the kind of stuff that, 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 that they license. But they put out Blam, and I will love them forever for it. And the Knights of Sidonia Master Editions are, are also really nice. Uh, but yeah, Vertical got fucking thrown in with uh, Kodansha. I was a little worried that we weren't going to get the, the rest of Knights of Sidonia, but they seem to be staying their own entity. So that's pretty rad. That is really, really cool. Um, you guys, I highly recommend, I've actually seen all of this. Um, do you own all the Gundam, Vertical Gundam? Yeah, I have uh, the Origin up here, and then I got uh, Wing right here. I have everything. Um, and then Thunderbolt. 
I think those are all pretty good. Favorite box set? Uh, Akira, definitely. Uh, the hardcover Akira box set is incredible. It's one of the most beautiful things on my shelf. Um, I like the Alita box set. We can just get those singles too, the hardcovers. I really like this show. It's trash, but I love it. Fucking Beyblade, dude. I love Beyblade. My wife was like, why did you buy that? And I'm like, dude, they take a licking, but keep on spitting. Like, I love Beyblade. Let her fucking rip, bro. Um, is Dylan still in the chat? Is Dylan still here? Who's all here, guys? Which which of you degenerates is still here? Um, Kira, oh, yeah, Kira does have an art book. You're right, Kira Club. Yeah, so technically I own that, but I didn't specifically buy it for the art book. Uh, have I read World Trigger? Yes, I like art. Uh, I like World Trigger. Um, you battle your daughter in Beyblades? Uh, no, but Taylor and I have played Beyblades a couple times. The original Blade Blade, Blade Blade series is so good. Yes, it is. Where's it at? The original classic first series. Here it is. Beyblade, baby. All 51 episodes. Justin Savak is putting it on one disc. Monster Hunter is still my favorite monster hunting anime. Um, is Bakuman good? I do not like Bakuman. Bakugan. I have some Bakugan figures over there. That's rad. Um, your thoughts on Fairy Tale? Uh, that's my thoughts on Fairy Tale. It's poopity doopity, poopity scoopity. It's terrible. Uh, but yeah, guys, I think I'm gonna get going here. Um, it was great talking to everybody. Um, thank you for everyone who's for tuning in. Um, uh, I love you all, and uh, I'll see you guys uh soon. Thanks for watching the haul video. This will be posted. Do you have Vagabond art book? No, I the only art books I have, Evangelion, and the Akira. Um. Digimon is pretty rad too. Have a good night, guys. Have a good night, everyone. Um, Professor Who, Ice, Mayor, Dylan, uh, Ames, everyone, everyone in the chat. Uh, talking about boxings and man, Mago, Mago Suman. Thank you, guys. You guys are all rad. Take care. Duty Flash. Bye. I don't want to miss anyone. So everyone, I love you. Good night.